So we're documenting the process of buying land, building houses. And we had the pad site done last week. I, you guys joined me when we uh, talked about uh, building out the pad site. Right now, we're setting forms. We're gonna actually form the uh, perimeter of the foundation. We had the survey company come out on Friday. They set all the corners of the entire uh, house for us. And so we'll e easily be able to string out the house and set the forms. Now we brought out a backhoe to start digging footings and, the, uh, and one of the tracks, that's the, where the, essentially like the tires of the backhoe, um, snapped and broke. So we have the, one of the companies coming out repairing that for us real quick so that we can get the footings in. So there's always a little bit of unforeseen circumstances that happens in every single build and every single day of, uh, of the build. Um, so it's just another, I, I always tell people, it's just another day in the office. A lot of people will make a big deal about something like that, stress out about it. And it's just another day in the office. You call um, the companies, one of the, one of the uh, equipment companies, they come out and um, they'll fix it for us and we'll be back in business here within the hour. It's still morning time, we've got a lot of daylight. And so we'll lose about an hour and a half of uh, daylight this morning, but there's other stuff the men can work on, like truing up the forms, getting everything laid out while we work on them getting the tractor fixed. Once the tractor's fixed, they'll be back in business and they'll start facilitating the footings, so forth and so on. But right now they can still set forms and facilitate work while they're waiting for the tractor to get fixed. So just another day in the office, let's take a look at what it looks like to be able to get the, uh, the layout done, the survey stake set and the forms going in. So we on top of the pad site and make sure they're meeting the grades for our benchmark. And let's talk to the guys and make sure that we have everything laid out the way we need to. So essentially the house sits exactly the way we want to to capture the views, the actual setting and the actual layout and size of the house. Come and join me. Forming the foundation. This is your pad site. This pad site now is essentially level. And so we're doing um, our framework to lay out the house. These are the forms. So we're doing our form set for the foundation. These guys are setting grades and they're cutting the footings. So these will be the footings for the walls, the structural components of the house. And um, these will go all around the perimeters and there'll be a few interior footings as well that we're gonna have to cut. Now the plum we'll wait for the interior footings to be cut until after the plumbing the plumbers come in and do what's called the rough in. So I'll bring you guys back in for another video when we do the rough in. But essentially right now we're truing the forms, we're making sure that everything's square and we're um, setting it exactly to where the house lays out. Now, if you guys look over here at where we have these survey stakes, the survey company comes out and sets hard, what's called hard corners for us. And so they'll come in and then they'll mark this with marking paint. And this is essentially the exact layout of the house. And then we'll still check it with the measuring tapes and make sure that it squares to the actual dimensions on the floor plans. But you have the, the concrete guys come in after the pad site's done and the concrete guys will come in, they'll form and frame the perimeter of the, for, of the uh, foundation initially. They'll dig the footing so they can set rebar but then after that is done, then we'll call in the plumbers before we call, we call, we, uh, call in for concrete and actually pour the foundation to come in and do their rough in where they'll come in and trench, run all their pipes to all the walls where all the sinks are, the toilets, the showers, the water heaters, the, um, the heating and cooling system, and anything that takes any type of water supply for the water faucets, the hose bibs, all of that stuff will get plumbed into the ground, into the subgrade. Then once that stuff's inspected, that stuff will get covered, compacted. Then the concrete guys will come back. They'll, they'll true their forms, make sure that no one hit their forms. Everything squares out to these exact same dimensions that we have laid out right now. And then they'll come in, put their steel mesh down, and then they'll schedule the concrete once the, uh, the pre-slab inspection has been done by the inspectors. Now, this is the initial part of the setting for the foundation. I noticed that there's some tree roots on the foundation over here on the back side of these footings. So we'll come back out, we'll mitigate that. We'll take all those tree roots out that we didn't see prior and we'll make sure there's no tree roots in the base of it and make sure that, that none of that organic material is gonna decompose. So we'll take all that stuff out, we'll grub all that stuff out of there and then we'll relay that stuff and, uh, and wet it down, recompact it before we actually pour the uh, foundation. But this is the setting of the forms um, pre-slab um, so that the plumbers can come in and do their, their uh, rough in. And so we're building a foundation, ladies and gentlemen. This is the, this is the initial part of building the foundation, setting the forms and erect before we erect the house. So like a homeowner is coming through and the first thing a homeowner is doing is they're walking with a realtor. They're, they're looking around right now and they're going, damn, this is pretty out here, right? They're looking at all the views. But they walk through the door and they're gonna look at the house, but what they're gonna do is they're gonna look through the windows to see what the views are from the house. 
So when they open this front door right here, they're not going to see that tractor anymore. That tractor will be gone. So what they're going to see is right here. This is their first view, okay, is right here. These junipers, that, that U.S. flag in that house. So in order to capture that view, they're going to have to walk past this entryway right here. There's going to be a little entry walk. There's going to be a hallway that goes this way right when you come through the house. So when you come through, they're going to have to take a couple steps in. And then when they look this way and they pivot at a 45 degree angle, then they'll see those views because we have massive windows. There's massive windows over here. These are eight foot tall windows and they're huge. They go across this whole back area and then the dining room is over here on the back side of the house and that's the back porch. So on the back porch, they're gonna have a great view. But what we're looking for is we're looking for them to be able to have um, just an exceptional view nonetheless from over here. So when we, uh, you know, that mountain being our view, if the house would shift just a little tiny bit more, we'd have a better view. Um, but we shifted it already seven degrees. And so we don't want to be onto the uh, sloped areas. So we want to have that, that point of view to the mountains. I'm up here now, if I can. Okay. So okay. I just send him a call. And I'm going to call him now when I get back to my truck, see if I can get a hold of him. All right, then. Okay. <clears throat> so when I do that, that inconvenience everybody, but I need to sell the house, right? So at the end of the day, even if it costs a couple thousand dollars more to, to move this, it's worth it because I'll end up sitting on a house that doesn't have the perfect views. If I can set the views perfect, that's all that really matters because then I can resell the house. So spending an extra day, an extra $2,000 right now is so much worth it to me because otherwise I'm gonna be sitting on a $750,000 house that's gonna sit for six months based on uh, the lack of views. It's not worth it. I'll just spend a couple thousand dollars. We're gonna make 200 grand on this house anyway. So to spend a couple thousand dollars to shift and rotate it right now, is so much more well worth it. And we only lose a day worth of labor. It's a pain in the ass. You kind of cringe a little bit. You feel bad for everybody that's already done work on here. But at the end of the day, no one's gonna feel bad for you when you can't sell the, your damn house. So um, as bad as you might feel having to make them do work twice, um, just pay them for it. And so I told them, we'll pay you for it. Just switch the damn house because at the end of the day, it's my investment, it's my risk. I wanna limit my liability. You gotta, you gotta bold up and make things, um, and make changes sometimes. And this is the best time to do it. You don't wanna be finding out that you have the wrong views once the house is framed because at that point in time, you can't do nothing about it. All you have to do is cringe and hope that it sells. Um, right now, I can make the changes, cost a couple thousand dollars, and, um, and, and we'll make those modifications right now and um, it'll set us in a better position for resale in uh, four months from now.